Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again. I just wanted to give you a quick little warning about this episode. We are going to talk about pregnancy complications, traumatic birth, NICU experience, and breastfeeding. And if that's not something that you are able to hear at the moment or you need a break from that, feel free to go ahead and skip this episode and we will see you next week. Thank you to BetterHelp, Home Chef, and Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of You Can Sit With Us. I'm Matt. Sitting next to me or across from me is Becky. Hello. We also have Rainy in here on the ones and twos and threes and fours. Hi. And today is a very special day. We are commemorating your first year of being a parent. Woo! Rebecca, how do you feel? How do you feel accomplished? It's been over a year now. It's been over a year. I have a one-year-old, which is still pretty wild to say. I will say, I don't say 13-month-old, (laughs) 14-month-old, 15-month-old, 16-month-old. I say he's like a little over one, a little under one. Okay. You just have to remember so many numbers, especially with him being a preemie, that I'm like, I just say he's one. He's He's a one-year-old. I mean, one sounds a lot. One is a lot. One is a whole year. Yeah. One sounds a lot. It's cray cray. We've known Henny now longer than he was inside. You know what I mean? He's been outside longer than he was inside. He's been growing outside more than he was growing inside. Yeah. We did one of those (laughs) photo shoots where it was like seven months in, seven months out. Oh. (laughs) He turned seven months. So that was really funny. Very cute. Yes. Very Mm -hmm. cute. Mm -hmm. We had Henny's first birthday, which was really, really fun. Mm -hmm. There was a DJ. It was the same DJ Miles and Sarah's had at their wedding because I loved them so much. I thought they were super fun. Um, We did a candy bar because I love candy. And Mm -hmm. all of this was pre-planned for a baby shower. So we were kind of converting it into first birthday. And so I knew at my baby shower, I wouldn't be drinking or anything else. So... Candy. I was like, I want candy. I want as much candy. Yes. And it was after my like gestational diabetes test. I was mm. like, I'm in. Not that candy gives you just gestational diabetes. That's a myth. But um, I was still being cautious about my mm-hmm. consumption before mm-hmm. then. But that was going to be my like my wild night of candy and soda. Instead, it was a wild one year old birthday party Inst- with candy and soda and. Music, it was crazy. It was wild. Lots of food, everything. Yes, there was. We did just snackies and then the candy. And my best friends from high school came out and they helped like make little candy bags that people could do as takeaways. Mm. And then we had a taco cart that yes. came and everybody had tacos. Mm. And that was really, Henny loves Mexican food. So he was Already. thrilled. He was ready to oh. eat, ready to go. Yes. Um. He did not nap the entire day. He stayed up, which was... Probably the longest. I mean, he did one travel day where he stayed up. It was all the candy. It was all the candy we gave him. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But Keith was like, we would take turns holding him, and you know, other people would hold him, and he was just like half asleep on people's shoulders. Mm, Sometimes he was very cute. It was he was very cuddly. He had a lot of fun. Everyone. Yep. I made a smash cake. So I made two smash cakes, actually. Mm. One to test it out and then one for the actual day. Oh. Um, and Henny. Wait, why do you call it a smash cake? Just because the kids smash it? Because they smash it. it. Yeah. Oh. It's supposed to be something that's that easy the for them to smush. I thought it was going to be like made of burgers, smash burgers, <laughs> but it's a cake. A burger cake for the burger baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, they call it a smash cake. Um, and I did a first trial because. At the time, we thought Henny was allergic to eggs because oh. he was having like bad reactions to them. But then mm-hmm. when we took him to the doctor, he was like, he's not allergic. It's just an aversion. But that was after we had already thought this. So I had to yeah. look up eggless cake recipes, which honestly, not terrible. Um, it's like vegan cake. kind of. Yeah, it's kind of like vegan yeah. cake. Yeah, we I ended up using um, banana. Oh, oh yeah, banana. it was just banana and oil. Yeah, was the um, switch up and some. Because we could still do dairy. So I did like a little Greek yogurt in it. Um, I found a recipe online. Um, And then the other thing is like, oh, do you put sugar in it? Do you not put sugar in it? Because there's all these things about sugar that stress you out when your baby's one. So did you put sugar in it? I ended up doing a sugar alternative. And then... Like maple syrup? (laughs) Yeah. It was basically... It wasn't maple syrup. It was like a monk... Not monk fruit, but it was one of those type sugars. Yeah. And then I did um, for his cake that I was testing, I hand whipped whipped cream. And then I was like, hell no, I'm not doing this on his birthday day. So I got just got sugar free. 
Frosting. Frosting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, I can't do this. And it's one day. It's not going to make that big of a deal. Um, But it was my first like foray into baking. Mm. Very fun. We had a very fun experience of me making the cake. And I got this big glass bowl down from um, the cabinet and I dropped it (gasps) and it shattered like marbles. Oh, it Well, yeah, they're like tempered, so they don't like get shards. Yeah. So it shattered like marbles and I was barefoot. So I just froze and my dad put his shoes on, walked over and picked me up to move me away from the (laughs) glass. And then this was coinciding with when Henny just started crawling, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like actively. So we were like, we must have cleaned the house for two hours afterwards. My dad brought the leaf blower inside And like blew everything towards like our bedroom so that we'd be able to go up through everything. And we still did find tiny, (gasps) tiny shards for like two more days after that. But thankfully it was stuff that was like in areas that he doesn't go on the floor in. But still Um, you're still walking around and stuff and the cats. Oh my God. And the cats. I was like, oh my God. One more thing. Add it to the list. Um, Well, my favorite moment of (laughs) Henry's birthday because I was a treasured guest. (laughs) was when we were all singing happy birthday Mm -hmm. and then you know it's kind of scary when it'll give a lot of people screams singing at you (laughs) um all surrounding you 360 surround sound and afterward he was like going for the cake (laughs) but then we would cheer because we're excited that he was gonna eat the cake and it would scare him away from the cake (laughs) So he kept putting his hands. It would be like everyone was quiet and then his hands would move toward the cake and we go, yay. And he was like, <gasps> yeah, like he thought he did something Aww. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. all were very quiet he when he touched it. It was like it. negative reinforcement. Yeah. <laughs> but we were like <laughs> congratulating him on touching the yeah. cake. It was really funny. It was that very was cute. Really funny. My it favorite really moment cute. actually, in memory of you, Matt, was the little tiny grasshopper that made a oh, home in your oh, hair. The prank mantis. Prank mantis. Yeah. Yes, that's what it was. We were standing mm-hmm. by Matt and I was like, Matt, something's in your hair. And it was a little baby praying mantis. It was, it was and then very we made tiny. Matt sit there while we took pictures of it in his hair. And then we relocated it. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know. I, I I don't think I'd ever seen a praying mantis in LA before. I've never seen one that little. Your backyard. I mean, it was so teensy. Your backyard. Yeah. Everything lives there. It all lives it's there. It's just so big. Live, love, has love. all the space for all of the animals. We are the Noah's Ark of <laughs> L.A. <laughs> Saving all the biodiversity Saving. in L.A. in your backyard. Yes, 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 yes. 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 But the party was really fun. It was really nice to have my parents there mm-hmm. and to have my high school friends there because they really helped put everything together. Yes. And we did like little pictures that people could take as like take homes of mm-hmm. all their like first pictures that was with very cute. Kenny. That was very and cute. so that was just kind of like what we used for decoration. In addition to like rave decorations, <laughs> there was a lot of mm-hmm. like neon and iridescent, but then also cute to like bannery type things that yes. were really fun. And all the kids loved the DJ. <gasps> yeah. So the many kids little kids bopping. came to the party mm-hmm. and they were all dancing, 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 dancing. Yeah. And oh my gosh, Unc- what did he play? Is it he kids played, songs? No, no, no. Okay. He played everything. We gave him a list, basically, of all of our favorite artists. Yeah. And then he kind of wove them in. So it was some oldies, some new. There were, like, a couple songs that were, like, we absolutely, like, want this song played. And it's not like it was, like, crazy dancey, but yeah. it was still, there were times where we danced, which was fun. It was fun dancing with Henny and all the little kids. It was, it was so sweet. Um, and his Uncle David got him this outdoor... Um, tunnel thing that we could Mm. do like a ball pit. We didn't fill the ball pit because like we have a ball pit inside and I was like, oh, hell no. The way those balls go everywhere. Um, So we had that for the kids to play in and um, what else do we get? Oh, a cozy coop car. Mm. All the kids were taking turns riding around in it. Mm. They loved it. So it was really fun. It was a cute very cute party. Very wholesome. Very wholesome. Very Good first birthday. Lots of candy. Yeah. And I was never getting a birthday party again. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was a lot of work. That was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but it was really fun. Yes. Yeah. Well, as they get older too, you can give them more like sugar things, you know, then they maybe it'd be more fun for you. Maybe. You know? Maybe. I think it's just the having to like be at a party with a baby uh-huh. <laughs> mm. is the harder part. But yeah. again, my parents were there. So I'd be like, and he really wants grandma. <laughs> Mom needs a Pinot Grigio yeah. while grandma needs soul the baby. Here you go, grandma. <laughs> my mom's like, yes, perfect. <laughs> right? But yeah, it was nice. We got some really good pictures of everyone and pictures with Henny. Oh. Henny was what, did you, really sweet. what did you do for mm-hmm. your first birthday? Does your mom recount stories to you or no? 
I don't remember. She's going to be mad that I forgot. <gasps> I don't know. I know there's a video of me and my brother eating because our birthdays were so close together. Right. And I remember there were like videos of us like with little like whipped cream cakes in right. like a high chair. Oh my God, cute. I know we mostly did like family stuff. Like I had a lot of family around when I was growing up. So we did stuff like at my grandparents' mm -hmm. house a lot. And then as I got older, my mom did lots of themed birthdays. Oh, okay. And for a few years, we did our birthdays together. Like I remember one year I had a cake that was half ballerina, half Michael Jordan. My mom was like, <laughs> like, are we, our birthdays are like literally two Ballerina, weeks apart. <laughs> so she was like, I can't do this. <laughs> they need to be together. Um, but we did like, my grandpa did a scavenger hunt one year or treasure oh hunt. Yeah. And we took all, all the kids went and like searched around the backyard. So it was always very themed. My parents mm -hmm. were really good at birthdays. So Get the activities going for the kids. I love the activities. And we had lots of, all of my cousins are right around my age mm -hmm. and my brother's age. So it's like, all the kids were young at the same time. Yeah. And we had lots of um, kids in the neighborhood mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. come over too. So it was a good, very wholesome, you know, we're a summer birthday. So Midwest family it was always get nice. together. Midwestern get together. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. So that was fun. Do you remember your first birthday? I don't remember it <laughs> specifically, but I, I remember pictures, you know, with like the cake and stuff. Oh yeah. And my godmother had gotten the cake a cake baked for me and it was from the chef who was the chef at the white house. <gasps> oh my God. I forgot who President it was. At the time. So yeah. So it was like a cool cake to have, even though I was like one, I don't <laughs> even remember anything baby. about the cake, but the picture <laughs> was beautiful. You know, I'm also a summer birthday Yeah. in August. So, you know, good lighting, good summer, <laughs> summer vibes, summer in New York. Yeah. Or I guess that's all I remember. About would you have been in? No, you were in New York then, right? Not Atlanta. Yeah. Wait, when were you in away. Atlanta? When he was um, yeah, when I was younger, my parents moved to Atlanta from upstate New York, and then in high school or right before high school, we moved back. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, that's when the horse birthday started. Well, when oh. was your first horse birthday? Well, we started riding <gasps> in Atlanta. Oh, okay. So it was young. Young. Yeah. Horse boy. Horse boy. You're everybody's oh. favorite horse boy. Horse. Horse boy. <laughs> Horse boy. I hope Henny loves something one day as much as you loved your horses. I mean, I think it might be a horse. <laughs> That's what Uncle Matt's going to take him to. Uncle Matt's going to go to the riding lessons, just like daddy's going to do swimming lessons. <laughs> <laughs> New way. <laughs> mommy says, no, thank you. <laughs> um, we're going to get mommy some cowboy boots so she can just walk into the barn and she'll feel great. <laughs> Maybe a cute outfit could sway me. Like, that, that was a quick turn. That was a quick turn. That's all you need. Cute and like maybe like tiny horses. I think I could do little horses. Miniature. I think it's that they're so big that freaks me out. I'm just like, you're so big. I mean. You're so big. And I'm like, I do you want me on you? Like it's so rare that you get on an animal. So yeah, it feels it like weird. wrong. Like yeah. I'm like, I know it's not wrong. But that's what but they've like, been doing for thousands yeah. of years. But I'm like, have been doing for, I haven't been doing it for a thousand years. So it makes me feel some kind of way being on top of them. Yeah. Whoa. I'm a pussy. Well, as you've hit your one year mark yeah. as a parent, do you, did it bring up like a lot of emotions and stuff? Cause you know, yeah. Henny was like in the Nick you and stuff. Yeah. So that was a crazy time. Yeah. It was crazy. It was a whirlwind, you know, they're always like, yeah. oh, it moves so fast. It moves so fast. But when you're in it, you're like, it doesn't seem like it's moving fast. <laughs> it feels like it's actually going quite slow. And every day is the same day. Yeah. Um, but it did feel like a nice accomplishment to get to one. I feel mm. like two is going to be when I really celebrate because that's when they stop making you adjust a preemie's age. Oh, um, interesting. So we stop having to remember the two different numbers because mm -hmm. I'm like not good at numbers. So sometimes they'll be like, <laughs> how old is he? And I'm like, his adjusted age is <laughs> some, right. some age. Um, but yeah, I think it did bring up a lot, right. you know. Every day I feel like Keith and I have the same conversation and it's what are we going to have for dinner? But there is one easy way to make that conversation over much quicker, and that's using Home Chef. Home Chef makes it really easy and saves you money. Home Chef provides fresh ingredients and chef-designed recipes. Right now, we're really obsessed with the creamy chive mahi-mahi and the bacon Dijon cauliflower that comes on the side. I could eat that for dinner every day. Home Chef has you and the entire family covered for delicious meals without the hassle. 
Home Chef has over 30 options a week and serves a variety of dietary needs. Not only is it convenient, but it's economical too. Home Chef customers save an average of $86 per month on groceries. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering our listeners 18 free meals plus free dessert for life and of course, free shipping on your first box. Go to homechef.com slash sit with us. That's homechef.com slash sit with us for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. You heard that right. Homechef.com slash sit with us. Must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What are your self-care non-negotiables? Maybe you never skip leg day. Maybe you never go to bed without washing your face. What about therapy day? When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip, even when we know that's what makes us happy. It's hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. Here at You Can Sit With Us, we love therapy. It's amazing to be able to talk to someone who is not biased, that can give you really honest feedback. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash sit with us today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sit with us. From staying in the NICU. And I yeah. also, this is my little side tangent that I pre-planned oh. because <laughs> I feel <laughs> like in the era that we're in right now with it being an election year, I do have to talk about one specific oh my gosh. thing that happened during Trump's presidency and why personally I do not think he should have another presidency. And it has to do with the NICU? It has to do with pregnant people. Oh. And so, and specifically, I think what I've heard from strangers on the internet mm. when they say they are talking about abortion rights, it's always in terms of just an abortion. Right. It has nothing to do with pregnant people. Mm. And I think that's a big misconception that the trickle down of restricting abortion care, how it affects pregnant people. Oh. So to help anyone who doesn't have anyone in their life who, you know, if you need a personal story to connect to for why you should not be voting for Donald Trump, who appoints lifetime nominees to the Supreme Court, um, when they overturned Roe v. Wade, there is a law called E-M-T-A-L-A. It's a lot of, that's why I wrote it down. So I was like, I'm going to forget about it. But it basically says that if you're a pregnant person, you cannot be denied access to an emergency room because it's so life or death when you're pregnant right. and need to yeah. go to an emergency room. So I benefited from that being in California. I was able to go to an emergency room that was not my hospital, not my doctors, no medical records. And I didn't even have my insurance card on me. It was back at our Airbnb. So without yeah. that, pregnant people in Texas, in Georgia, I think is another place, Ohio, wherever they wow. have total abortion bans, doctors are turning away pregnant people from ERs. Wow. Because of the fear that they could need an abortion, that there could be them. a medical emergency where that would need to happen. Um, so we need to vote for politicians and policies that protect those Absolutely. people because that hurts pregnant people. If I was where I was when I when my water broke and I was denied access to an emergency room, I could have gotten sepsis. Like yeah. Henny could have gotten sepsis. It would have been very bad. That is actually what happened. If you heard there was a case last year, I think, of a Texas woman, that's exactly what happened. Wow. Her water broke dangerously early. She was denied access from a medical facility in Texas mm -hmm. because the doctors were scared of pregnant people coming in. And she, unfortunately, her baby died. She went near death delivering wow. the baby. Um, and so when you're voting for these politicians, you're also voting for policies that trickle down and affect so much more than the single issue that you think you're voting for. Right. So you might think I don't, I never want to have an abortion. So I, you know, my religion or my morals tell me I shouldn't do that. And I'm going to vote that way, but it will affect other people Yeah. in, Definitely. in so many more ways than just restricting abortion care. So if you're trying to vote that way because of that one yeah. single issue, like hopefully that explanation moves you a little closer to the center of just, mm -hmm. it's not just, Roe v. Wade is not just about abortion. It's about 
access to healthcare, which mm-hmm. I personally believe abortion access to abortions is healthcare. Right. If that's not something you believe, that's a whole nother conversation, but pregnant people deserve care. Absolutely. So they need it. Swing that back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that's why I feel like I have to bring that up with Henny's story because if I was denied that access, you know, we could be having a very different conversation right now, but because yeah. I live in California and not Texas, right. they had to let me in. It saves lives. Yeah. yeah it saved my life. It saved Tenny's lives. I went yeah. on antibiotics immediately. Um, and yeah. So just try and think about that when you're voting. That's true. But back to the baby. Now that what? we're yeah, what, other, back. what other advice do you have for parents who have a kid in the NICU? Um, I actually think I have a lot of advice and I wrote it down. So I might be looking to Cause I, had, I have a friend who yeah. just recently gave birth and her kids in the NICU. Yeah. I it's think hard. They, it's, it's really emotionally challenging. Yes. I think the biggest advice and I asked Keith what he thought would be advice that he would give someone else right. after this is like, it's such a tough pill to swallow that you're preparing to be a parent for this extended period of time. Mm-hmm. And then the first thing you can do for your kid to right. help them and to parent them is to let them be with someone else. Mm. Like that's going to cause some inner turmoil. Right. But like if your kid is in the NICU, the nurses and the doctors don't want your kid in the NICU. <laughs> yeah. right. They want your kid home. They want them to be with you. They don't want that. So mm. all of the things that are happening to your kid, like if they're having, like Henny was having medical emergencies while he was there and like, if he was home with us, mm-hmm. that would not have been good for him. Right. But it's the best place for them to be mm-hmm. um, exactly. until, and they, and they won't let you go if your kid's not ready to go. To meet certain milestones. Right yeah. Right. So hitting those is like hard and scary, but it's the best place they could be. Also, they know, honest, they're going to know better than you, right? 100%. That's like their everyday life. They know all the signs. They know 100%. every little thing and they're there 24 seven where it's hard being a new yeah. parent and you're like sleepy and like you're sleepy. You're trying. physically healing, right? Especially like if you had a C-section yeah. or you had other like traumatic birth things happen to you, you're healing mentally, you're healing physically, your milk is coming in or it's not, which are mm-hmm. two crazy things that happen. Mm. Um, so I would just say like, trying to remember that your kid is in the best possible place that they could be. Um, And speaking of the nurses, ask as many questions as you can. Mm. Like get all of the free, you're going to hear other parents talking about how they took all the blankets from the hospital room and all the diapers from the hospital room. Good for them. Um, (laughs) You're not going to get to take those things, (laughs) but you're going to take lots and lots and lots and lots of advice from the nurses. Mm -hmm. Like we took videos of our nurses swaddling Henny we tips and tricks, tips and tricks, ask the best, them yeah. literally anything. Cause you're going to be around them a mm-hmm. lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and also one of the advice that one of our nurses gave us because Keith was on his paternity leave during that time. She was like, if this is all of your paternity leave, don't take it now. Take mm-hmm. it when your kid's home, they're here with us and we right. can take care of them. And like, right. you can come when you can, right. but like if there's a way to mm-hmm. push your paternity leave and your maternity leave, I mean, obviously the maternity leave is going to be a little different, but for paternity leave, if you can push that later as hard as it is to not be with your kid all day and all night, Mm. push it to later because then you're going to miss out on that time when they are home and they're with you, which is like a complete shock to your system. And when they need more care too. Mm. And when they need more care, yeah. So I would definitely do that. Um, And then, oh, buy preemie clothes. No one mm. told us and Henny was like half naked for <laughs> like two weeks after they, if they're jaundice, after they're done with like being in the lights and stuff and they mm. hit their temperature, at least at our hospital, they wanted them to be clothed all the time. And preemie clothes are not easy to find. Mm. Like fuck Jeff Bezos, but Amazon was the only place that we could get fast. They just did like didn't have clothes. a target? No. Oh, wow. wow. Well, no one plans on having a preemie. That's Even true. if you do plan on having a preemie, you don't nec- you're not necessarily buying clothes you know what I mean Mm -hmm. yeah so I would say like first thing just buy some clothes and order them really quick Mm -hmm. just so that they're there when you need them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um how when is a baby considered a preemie it's just is it a weight designation or is it like no it's by weeks of birth it's by weeks so it's there's um preemie there's a moderate preemie and then there's an early preemie and an Mm. early preemie I think is like 28 weeks and earlier because that's 
I think the viability is only at somewhere in like 26 weeks or something. That could be a lie. Don't quote me. Please don't. Mm -hmm. Um, But 28 weeks is a really, really early preemie. Mm. 33 weeks where Henny was as a moderate preemie. Mm. And then um, you might hear people say like, oh, they weren't really that preemie. And that's like, oh, you guys. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But they're usually talking about someone that was born at like 37 weeks, 36 weeks. Because like a 40 week gestation is like supposed to be the the number that you're shooting for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But your baby could go into the NICU for reasons other than being a preemie, you could have a, like a medically complicated birth or they could oh, be like okay. a really low weight. Mm-hmm. Um, any of those things could, they mm. could most or uh, from what we were told, a lot of babies that are born premature are, do have jaundice. Oh, um, but your baby could have jaundice and they weren't a preemie. Right. So there's all sorts of reasons your kid could be, ta- you could be taken to the NICU for two days, mm. like two days, two weeks, two months. Like mm. people can be there for a really long time. Wow. Um, what are, the head of the NICU told us was because we were kind of asking like, how long do you think we're going to be here? And they were like, at the minimum, a couple weeks at the maximum, your um, birth date, like what wow. you, sh- when you should have given oh, birth. Interesting. Okay. And that's actually what happened for us is we were like a couple days off from our actual birth wow. date because he was there for 40 days. Right. So, Yeah. Was there any food, like any food tips? Like, I guess you could leave the hospital so you don't really have to like pack for food. Were you just eating restaurants? Um, Yeah. I mean, you you can pack lunch. Some NICUs don't let you bring food in. Some let you have snacks. Yeah. Um, It just depends. Ask questions Mm -hmm. about where you're going to be. Plan for your time. If you're pumping, you're going to be fucking ravenous. Uh You're going to be so hungry and thirsty. So just making sure you have those snacks right because again you can't take care of your baby if you're not taking care of yourself Mm -hmm. um so definitely do that um another tip for when your baby's left the NICU is or even when they're in it I would say people are gonna say some fucked up things to you sometimes (laughs) like what do you mean you just have to know they don't mean it yes okay like they'll give you advice or I remember someone said to us like Oh, yeah, I remember taking a baby home. It's the scariest thing you could imagine. Oh, uh, okay. And like that is after Not helpful. a day where, <laughs> yeah, where Keith and I had seen Henny turn blue and stop breathing like 12 times in a row. No. Right. Like yeah. everybody's experience is different. And like, yes, that was the scariest time for that person. Yeah. But like you don't need to connect in that way. I would say like try not. If you're a parent or even someone who hasn't had a kid and you're trying to connect with your friend or family that has a kid in the NICU, don't try to relate with your own birth story Mm -hmm. or the the things that happened with your kid. If Mm -hmm. your kid was in the NICU and you went through something similar, like go for it. Share that advice. I mean, every situation is different, but it is, I mean, it's night and day when it comes to, like I had a mom once tell me like, oh, did you, because Henny doesn't have medical needs post NICU, right? Mm. He didn't leave with a ventilator right, or right. didn't leave with any with oxygen, rest, oxygen any anything stuff. like that, which yeah. happens to a lot of kids. Um, she was like, did you ever feel like you were like an imposter in the NICU? Cause your kid wasn't that sick. Whoa. And I was like, that feels like a weird question. <laughs> <laughs> an imposter? I was just like, um, no, I mean, he was four pounds. Like he needed to be there. Stop breathing and like, couldn't, swallow and breathe at the same what? time <laughs> so but it's just people just say things and yeah. it's just like um and then the other Weird. advice i would have for NICU parents afterwards is if you are sharing your story with other people like just you're not a debbie downer that's just your experience that you mm-hmm. had mm-hmm. but i would say if someone's pregnant and they ask you about your birth story warn them it was traumatic first and say do you still want to hear it <laughs> right yeah like because it is a reality of what happens, but you don't necessarily need to psych someone out. Psych someone out. Yeah. yeah. Tell them to expect the worst. Like that's not helpful for anyone. Because I no. think any parent who's had a kid in the NICU or had a kid early or has had anything happen with their kid, mm-hmm. you don't want that to happen to someone else's kid. Right. Like all of my friends that are pregnant, I'm like, I want you to have the best birth ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want it to be perfect. The most magical. The most magical, beautiful experience. Right. Yeah. And then tips for... If you have a friend in the NICU, I would say the one thing I hated getting was a text that was like, how are you guys doing? Mm. And I was like, I'm going to bang my head in the wall (laughs) because I was just like, it's so vague. Yeah, I think asking really specific questions like, how is Henry doing today? Or like, how are you feeling today? 
like making it a very specific time period is mm-hmm. a lot easier to wrap your head around than a concept. What's new? What's new? Yeah. And then the other thing is yeah. I have a lot of friends that, and we did this too when our friends gave birth, was we sent food. Mm-hmm. Um, parents in the NICU, I mean, for us, we didn't need food. We could go out yeah. and go grocery shopping and go yeah. make food. Easy for you. But like we had friends come over and like like you did, brought us yeah. clothes. Like you threw some stuff in the laundry when we were out once. And yeah. um, Ryan Garcia hung like a mirror and mm-hmm. put together a nursery chair, like tasks. Yeah. Because if your baby is coming early, there's a chance that those things aren't done. You're not fully prepped. Yeah, you're not yeah. fully prepped in aren't that way. It. So having people offer like, mm-hmm. hey, do you need me to check in? If you have pets, hey, do you need me to check in on the pets? Someone has a dog. Hey, you want me to walk your dog or right. whatever that may be. I would say tasks are more, we're higher on my priority list than mm. like food or mm-hmm. things like that. Wow. Yeah. Were there any uh, like positive experiences coming out of the NICU? Like you said, you got lots of tips oh, and tricks yeah. from the, the tips nurses. tips and tricks for sure. I yeah. mean, we came home... The way that I like explained it to other people who didn't have a kid in the NICU was like when they brought their baby home, it was this little slug and they were just kind of like, okay, this is my baby now. Yeah. We brought a baby home six weeks after he was developed. Right. So like we knew him Mm. from being in the hospital. We had time where like we weren't his sole caregivers. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a, a child that you get to take home right away, you're just immediately a parent. Right. We sort of lived in a limbo where we Mm. weren't the main parent responsible. Mm -hmm. The nurses were the main parents responsible and we still had responsibilities, but so I think we were better equipped when Mm. we came home Mm -hmm. because we knew what Henny's sleeping schedule was like. He was a baby that really took to the scheduling that the NICU did. Right. So he stayed on a very consistent eating, sleeping it's kind of sleep trained from yeah, being there. Yeah, kind of from mm-hmm. the jump. Um, so I think that was like a positive. I think, I mean, every baby's temperament is different, but I would say of the friends that I have that have had kids in the NICU, mm-hmm. they tend to be sleep a little better. <laughs> They're used to the noise and <laughs> stuff around to, them. Yeah, like yeah. Henny can go out and would sleep wherever when he was little. Oh. And I had other friends who had babies that were like, I call them fully cooked and they would have fully cooked babies that were like maybe a m- bit more sensitive to right, things. Right. But like in the NICU, if Henny was crying, if he wasn't coding or had some sort of emergency, nobody went to him immediately. Mm. Oh, there wow. was no, like if I was there, I'd be like, ha, ah, you right. know, that's your baby. You hear him cry like once reaction. and you're like, ah, I have to go there. I have to see him. Um, but the times that we weren't there, like mm. the nurses were in charge of three to four babies at a time. So if they were, caring for another baby, they prioritized, you know, Mm -hmm. who needed medical help as opposed to immediate reaction. Mm. So I think, yeah, all temperaments are different, but I think that's why his temperament is a little more chill Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is because of that experience. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just getting all those tips and tricks from the nurses. Yeah. Yeah. And then also services. It's, Mm. and he was like one week away from getting, if he was born at 32 weeks, he would have automatically be set up for um, observation, like check-ins. Oh, okay. Um, since he was born early. Mm-hmm. Uh, but later on, now you have to go through other things with the state, which mm-hmm. get annoying. But mm-hmm. I would say that's a benefit as you kind of get an immediate mm-hmm. help. Right. You know, uh, being premature is a for, medical. Um, right. What do you call For different them? type of therapies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. for different right. therapies and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a, not a comorbidity, a medical condition, mm-hmm. I guess, for a baby mm-hmm. if you're premature. So you can just say, oh, they're premature. And then a door kind of opens faster than if you were a term baby that's, you know, not meeting milestones or something. Right. From I see my understanding. Mean. Right. So that's been not helpful, but because, you know, it probably maybe wouldn't need the service. Right. Exactly. If he was fully cooked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> An alternate reality. You'll never yeah, know. Yeah, the alternate, I'll never know. Yeah. No. It, was that hard <laughs> also because you have an idea, like you fi- you find out you're having a baby, mm-hmm. you have this idea of how it's going to go, and then it doesn't go. Oh, Does that meet yeah. that idea? Right? Yeah. I mean, immediately you're so like full of adrenaline that mm-hmm. you can't really, like I remember just being so excited after he was born, and even though he was in the NICU, and then every time we'd FaceTime with someone, they looked like terrified. 
<laughs> like they just looked because like we were looking at Henry we were like, look at this beautiful, like, right. oh, he's perfect. He's a beautiful baby. I mean, he was hooked up to so many machines yeah, and like it's, yeah, it's you saw scary. him like two days after he yeah. was like, he had a, what a like Billy Rubin light or whatever yeah, it's the, called. The tanning so light he on. was tan. He was like so tan and crispy <laughs> and like had goggles on and, you know, was intubated and all these things. So like, you're so in it that you don't realize like, right. oh, my kid lo looks sick and like right, right. underdeveloped and mm -hmm. little. Mm -hmm. um, so I think once that sort of like wore off as the weeks went on and then as like months and the year went by, it definitely like hits you more. Like I still really don't watch if someone's like on TikTok doing like a, a mm. birth announcement or mm -hmm. like they're taking pictures. Like it still makes me like, ugh when I see someone like taking yeah. pictures in the hospital bed, like with their baby on them, like, mm. and that's just a thing. It's not that I don't want that for that person. It's just hard to like reconcile. And mm. honey is our only kid and will be our only kid. Right. So it's not like there's another opportunity to do that and like have a do over. Right. So it's like, that's hard to wrap your head around. Yeah. And then like, yeah, feeling like you can't really connect on the same way to other people who did have full term babies. A blissful experience. A blissful experience, which again, I hope yeah. for everyone, they have a blissful experience. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a room of people talking about their, you know, wonderful birth experiences, it does feel very othering. Yeah. Like in that. my mommy and me, I was the only one with a preemie. I was going to ask you because yeah. probably all the mommy and me people talk about. Yeah. I would say the most all of that crazy thing was right at the beginning of Mommy and Me, they had us all go around and tell our birth stories. And oh, I was wow. like fully unprepared for that. <laughs> I was like, ah. oh, um, not ready to share your full experience with all these strangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. An experience that I didn't even share with like most people right. <laughs> I knew in full detail. Right. Yeah. Um, so that was an experience. Mm -hmm. But I think finding other preemie parents like. Um, hmm. Henny's in this like sensory play class now through the okay. state and it's at this like it's so cute there's like a little town that the kids can play in and there's like an occupational therapist there mm. that like sits with them and like plays games and stuff and it's the first place that I've been like there was another little kid there and I was like oh my god he's so cute how old is he and she was like you know he's whatever 14 months but his adjusted age is blah 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 and I was like oh my god Henny's adjusted age is blah, blah, blah. Like it was the first right, time I was right. around other parents that it wasn't like you have to explain what an adjusted age is mm. or, you know, their kids are, you know, and mommy and me, like his, a lot of the kids that are born around the same time as him are doing things much faster than he's oh, doing. I see. Yeah. So like he's very reserved and maybe they're a little more outgoing, mm -hmm. but being able to be with other parents and other kids who are in a similar phase right. in a similar stage in their life is like more relaxing, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you feel like mm -hmm. you can relate on like a different level. Oh yeah. I'm which sure. is nice. And the kids probably play like more on the same level. Yeah. More like yeah. each other. Well, yeah. and you get to see like there are so many different things. I mean, at the end of the day, even though he was in the NICU, we had a pretty good NICU experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I mentioned before, we were never wondering if he was getting out of the NICU. It was always when he was getting right, out of the right. NICU. But there are other people who have babies Ugh, so early so that there's a question of that or who have, Ooh. you know, like you said, take oxygen home with them yeah. or are having like severe developmental delays because of whatever happened with their birth. And, you know, we're very grateful so that that isn't the experience that we had. Yeah. And I think kind of remembering that is helpful too. Like when we were the, in the NICU, I was like, it could be worse. Yeah. It could be worse. There yeah. are worse things that could happen. Definitely. This is just like a bump in the road. Yes. But yeah. I mean, because your mommy and me experience has been pretty big too. You've <gasps> done is. a lot of stuff. I did all with the mommy, mommy and me stuff. Yes. So <laughs> how has a year of your mommy and me life <gasps> Ben. I love mommy and me. I was one of those moms. I was like, I, this is great. <laughs> um, yeah, I did a mommy and me that was, it was actually really kismet because we took Henny out to this um, like little strip molly type place mm. and Keith was holding him and it was like a couple weeks after we had gotten home and this mom and baby walked up to him and were like, oh my God, how old is your baby? Like blah, blah, blah. Because they were about the same age. Mm. And she was like, oh, are you and a mommy and me? And I'm like, no, what's that? And she told me about it. And I like literally signed up immediately. And then we ended up not being in the same class because there were two classes. 
but we just oh did the very last class. There's only like two weeks left. But mm. when I got there for the first day, she walked in with her kid Aww. and she was like, is that? And I was like, are you? <laughs> and it was like, you know, after That's a year funny. we had reconnected in this last class. Oh my gosh. Um, but I love it. We have a really great, the mommy and me like instructor is a therapist. Mm. So she has like lots of really good tips for like, not just parenting tips, but like relationship tips and like mm. interpersonal tips. And yeah. it's all very open. And I think just having kids around the same age, like I have a lot of friends with babies mm. and it's amazing. Some of them are like a year and a half or two years right. or three years. Like, and that does make a pretty big difference when they're little. Mm -hmm. um, so having kids that are all within the same couple months is really nice because yeah. you get to see them kind of play and get like other tips and tricks and you know one of the moms i met in there is a physician's assistant and we mm. like text i'm like honey has something in his eye and she's like it's okay <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like hey do you have a makeup rack for concealer and i'm like yeah <laughs> like it's just nice to have friends like that network. are from yeah. this particular period in your life mm -hmm. that like don't have anything to do with the before period of your life and do, do the classes last a year? Is that how long mm -hmm. people normally stay in it? It's yeah. It's like the first year. Yeah, it's like the first year. Okay. And then there are like toddler classes you can go to. But by yeah. this point, we've all kind of like, we have our own little separate group chats. And like mm. some of us are doing a music class. Some of us are doing a sensory class. Like mm. people will text and be like, hey, I'm going to go to my gym, which is like a little kids mm -hmm. playground type thing. Um, and we just meet up and do is it only mommies together. or do daddies go to? Just mommies. There is a mommy and me. I think it's like and and we or something. Mommy and we. <laughs> and stop. that's for mommy, daddy, and baby. <laughs> but I assume if it was, I, I don't know. I actually don't know. Mine is just mommies. Yeah. But wow. I really loved it. I think it's really nice to have a community to be a part of. Right. Um. So looking around, the places do it everywhere. Like churches do it. Yeah. Um, rec centers do it. Lots Just of different looking, versions. Yeah. Look mm -hmm. for one in your area. And there's different like price points because it does cost money. Right. Um, but there are a lot of resources out there to help you like make friends. The and, babies. Like, and be with the babies. Yeah. For all the babies. Okay. Loving it. Mm -hmm. So what's something that you wish someone had told you sooner? I feel like I was pretty prepared with advice from like people in my life mm -hmm. for being like a mom, but I don't think I got enough advice from people prior to baby of to be like a wife and a mom or be like mm -hmm. a partner and a mom because mm -hmm. I think it's we talk so much about like we're a team, we're a team, we're doing this as a team, but like for Keith and I, especially when we got home from the NICU, we were even when we were in the NICU, we functioned separately. Like we right. it was like the way that we could do sleep and um take care of ourselves was like I would pump, but then I would immediately go back to sleep and Keith would stay up and wash the pump parts mm. and then he would come back. So we were mm -hmm. kind of operating on slightly different schedules. Mm -hmm. And then when we brought him home, we tried for like I must have been like two days to <laughs> both be in the room with him and have oh, honey yeah. at the edge of our bed. Yeah. And another hurdle we had was the cats. We just weren't sure how they would be with him. So like, and they sleep in bed with us. So mm -hmm. like kicking them out of the room was making them make noise outside the room to get in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we had to figure out like a better way to function. And so for us, what that looked like was Keith took the first shift. Mm -hmm. I would go to bed at like, I would try to go to bed by like 7.30, 8-ish. And Keith would stay up until 2.30-ish because mm. that worked out for my pump schedule. Because when I say I went to bed at 7.30, I still woke up every two hours, mm. two to three hours to pump. Ugh. But I would like keep it by my bed, pump. And then again, leave the pump parts outside. Keith would clean them and I would go right. back to bed. Um, and then I would take over from 2.30 to 3 into the next day. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like we weren't necessarily prepared for how much it would be like you're a team, but you're tag maybe team. you're a tag team. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good way to put it. We were a team, but we were a tag team. Yeah. Whereas like you kind of have this idea of like, you're both waking up, you're both doing these things. And especially since Keith was going back to work, mm. we had about two weeks at home by ourselves with our doula mm -hmm. and then two weeks with my parents. And then once that total four weeks was <laughs> Right. Becky and Keith. On your own. <laughs> and yeah. Keith was back at work. Yeah. But I was glad that my parents were there when Keith went back to work because that was a hard adjustment too. Yeah. Big transition. Because it's like, oh, you went from being the one that got up at 2.30 to 3 and then stayed up, which was fine when two people were there. <laughs> but then, <laughs> oh, when 2.30 to 3 rolls into 7.30 the next day, you're a little sleep out of it. Deprived. You're a little sleep deprived. Either way, you're yeah. going to be sleep deprived. Either way, you're not getting sleep. 
Nope. You're not getting sleep. Though I do think in my experience, my pregnancy sleep was worse than my really? parents' oh, sleep. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I feel like the tired that I was was different. Like I was more tired um, mm-hmm. post baby, but I slept deeper and got better sleep. Mm. Whereas pregnancy, especially because Henny was only on one side the entire time. Yeah. I was so uncomfortable. Yeah. Like sleeping was painful. Walking was painful. Like sometimes I would just like press on one side of my body just to like feel similar weight because it just Mm. felt like, like it felt like he was in my stomach, but it still very much felt like he was riding on my right hip. Mm -hmm. And so my left hip was like overcompensating. Right. Yeah. How much do you think you're paying in subscriptions every month? The answer is probably more than you think. Over 74% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about. I definitely did. You know I love my Scandi crime drama, and I forgot that I was subscribed to three different streaming services to watch it. Oops. Thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones I forgot about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lower bills for you, up to 20%. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash sit with us. That's rocketmoney.com slash sit with us. Rocketmoney.com slash sit with us. Just unbalanced body. But I have friends that have done the total opposite. They were like, pregnancy sleep was, a you know, a breeze. And then I sleep would, all day. you know, yeah. And then when the baby came, if I looked at my phone for two seconds, I was up for the whole next shift. Oh, like, I see. and I didn't have that. I could look at my phone while I was pumping and immediately like, <laughs> like close my out. eyes when I was asleep. <laughs> yeah. I was ready to go. But yeah, I think that's advice I wish I would have gotten before. Mm-hmm. Like how you to manage. figure out your new system. Yeah, figuring out your new system. Because I actually saw a TikTok where someone was talking about it and they were like, the crazy thing about like having a baby is like the day before you're a person with a house mm-hmm. and a partner or not a partner, whatever your situation is, pets, a job, uh, this life, these friends, blah, blah, blah. And then literally the next day, you're still that person with all those things, right. but you're also a completely new person with a baby. Yeah. Your so priorities like change for sure. Immediate. And just like, like, boop. Right. You have to change everything. Yeah. So that is a little bit of a shock, but. A whole new world. A whole new world. Well, we have some smash or pass baby things. Love. For you. I love baby things. I mean, I don't really have any opinion because <laughs> I don't have a baby except for my fur babies. I do know? want you to also guess what these things are. Um, this is a list I assume Keith gave you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what most of these are. Okay. So the first one is a zany zoo. What do you think the zany zoo is? Um, The zany <laughs> zoo sounds like it's like a little... um toy that like makes sounds you like press them and they okay. do like the moo sound oh, quack quack okay. sound something like that okay so the zany zoo which i love a bunch of my friends love i will recommend it forever is they sell it at target mm-hmm. do you remember at doctor's offices the wooden toy set that was like that kind of the abacus type oh, yeah. spinny at uh-huh. the top and then there were things you can flip yes. on the sides yes that's the zany zoo it's just zoo themed Oh, I see. I was <laughs> like, where it. does the zoo come in? <laughs> no, they have it in like, they're, it's not specifically called a zany zoo, but it's just a mm-hmm. wooden, a big wooden box that a kid can smack around. Let's and see. there's lots of little things for them right. to see and touch and feel. And to move. Yeah. I see. So that's the zany zoo. Absolutely the smash the zany zoo. Although you do not need a zany zoo until much later. Yeah. <laughs> you do not need a zany zoo Babies taking up space in your house. Yeah. <laughs> um, The Mama Roo. What do you think a mama roo is? Um, is it like Bonnaroo except for moms? It's actually a mom only concert <laughs> um, that all moms get invited to. Sounds correct. <laughs> a mama roo is um, this machine that looks like a big egg. You know, those egg swings. Uh-huh. And you put the baby in it and it swings the <gasps> oh, baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know yeah, that? yeah. Mm-hmm. So I actually got mine from Miles and Sarah. They gave mm. it to me. Honey had no interest, zero interest. Hated like the mama roo. Nope. 
You didn't like hated it. So if I had bought it myself, I would definitely pass because they're pretty expensive and they're huge. Yeah. But yeah, I would pass. Pass on the Mamaru. I know too many people that go both ways where it's either their kid loved it or the kid hated it. And like, I just would not spend that money for something that was uncertain. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it takes up a lot of space. It's big. It's Um, the size of our cat litter box. It's big. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is big. Spaceship. Yeah. So I pass. Bath cups. What do you think of bath cups? It's like the cups you use to give your kid a bath, like to pour the water on them. Yeah, I guess. I don't really know what keeps them. (laughs) I guess the cups, we have these cups in the bathtub that have different shapes punched out of them and you can lift them up and the shapes come down. Um, I would smash. Cups are good. Cups Cups are nice. Our life. Yeah, we like the Um, cups. Honker. Okay, a honker, what do you think a honker is? <laughs> um, is it like a squeaky toy, like a dog toy, and it goes honk, honk, you know, when you squeeze it? Kind of. <laughs> so this is not a real toy called a honker. It's what we call a honker, but it's a toy that when you put it, like it's like a shape, like a triangle. You mm-hmm. put it in, and as it falls into the spot, it goes, ooh, because oh, of the air. I've seen those, yes. Yes. So you, you use them later on when kids are figuring out the little... Um, the shape shapes order shapes. things. Yeah. Um, but Henry realized, and by realized, I mean, Keith did it <laughs> first. Henry realized if you blow into it, it makes a noise like a duck whistle. Oh, okay. and so Henry does not actually use it to sort toy, put the shapes in. He just blows in Single and out use. of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blow, wah, 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 oh my like God. Oh, um, I see. So I would smash the honker because, it's beloved in our home, but I would also pass on the honker because it is loud. <laughs> the honker is you're loud. You're going to be hearing it for years, Becky. Yes, the honker will yes. never end. <laughs> yes. Stuffed animals. Pretty easy. I feel I, like everyone loves some stuffed yeah, animals. Yeah. I would smash stuffed animals, but later. What's your favorite type of stuffed animal? Like the plushies? I love like those, the Beanie Babies. Those jelly cat things. Oh, the jelly cat. We got so okay. many jelly cat stuffed animals, and mm-hmm. they're just so soft. Soft. Yeah. Every time someone gave us a new one, I was like, how is it so soft? It's like such a nice like texture to feel. Plastic, yeah. yeah. Well, it's soft. Soft plastic. It's soft. I love it. Uh, swaddle. The baby swaddle. You know what a swaddle is, right? The baby swaddle. Put yeah. In the, the thing. Little baby burrito. <laughs> yeah. Make a I would smash a baby burrito, but pass on how many baby burrito options there are. Oh. We had like six different swaddles ways to swaddle yeah there they were different, different swaddles ways. for different things mm. um the one that we ended up loving was i don't remember what it is but it's like a transition swaddle where they're they start like this then their arms can go oh. up and okay. then you unzip the arms and then eventually because the swaddle keep the baby as a startle reflex yeah so they'll wake themselves up because they like smack themselves or they just startle so the swaddle holds them in it makes right. them all cozy but eventually they don't have that startle reflex Right. So you have to transition them out of the swaddle. And I think mm. it's at like six months is like a hard, you need to stop using this. Or if they roll over, oh. because if they roll over, oh. they need their arms to be able to push they're up. Stuck, so stuck like down, face yeah. down. So they're very like, if Did your you baby can the, roll, take it out. Mm. The baby Bjorn. Because that feels very swaddly. The one that you wear? Yeah. Yes, I love. I had, I mean, I feel like other moms might relate to this. During pregnancy and you're up at like 4 a.m. and you're like impulse buying things. That was me. That was the Art of Pop carrier. Mm. It is a stupid expensive carrier, but it is the only carrier I used the whole time. I still use it with Henny. Mm -hmm. I love it. You can get them secondhand on like Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. Um, I bought it like in a haze one night and it's like the best purchase I think I bought in pregnancy Mm -hmm. because it's so easy to put on and off by yourself. Oh, I I didn't need Keith to do a hundred straps for me. Even when Henny was really, really tiny, I was able to put myself in it and walk him around. I did also like the, when he was really little, I really liked the big long fabric, Yeah, but it took a lot of practice to put him in that. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like it was like, (laughs) undo every time. yeah, Yeah. It was a lot. So I highly recommend that. Um, the reading chair. Is that the same as like a rocking chair? Yeah, I think a rocking chair. I love our rocking chair. Rock it back and forth. Big, cozy. Um, I might have kind of said this before, but we got like a double wide one because we were like, oh, "Oh, when we have more kids, we'll be able to put it with us. But now we're like, hey, if Annie wants to sit up here next to us, (laughs) we'll both be able to sit here. (laughs) Um, But I highly recommend. I love it's huge. It's big. We got a glider, which Mm -hmm. means you can spin it all around. 
So it doesn't do a traditional like rock back and forth. I mean, it does rock, but it's called a glider. Um, so every, it's smooth. Every which way. Yeah, I love it. 10 out of 10, smash. How about the shusher? Is that the one that goes shh? It goes shh. Smash the shusher. We stand a shusher <laughs> in our home, yeah. which freaked me out at first because I was like, this is weird. It's just a man going shh. shh. A man. Oh, it saves your jaw from going shh, 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 oh. over and over and over. And it turns itself off automatically. Mm -hmm. We stand a shusher in this house. Shushers, 10 out of 10. Shush. Love away. the shush. shush Love away. the shush. Man? It's like a little It's doll? literally, no, it's um like plastic. It's like a little like twist plastic thing. Oh. But it's literally a man recorded himself. Oh. Going shh. Oh. Shh. And it's like, I love it. Mm. Yes. Love it. Mm -hmm. um, this is the last one I'm going to ask you. Okay. Baby wipe warmer. Pass. 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 Not, not worth it. Not worth it. Get the cold wipes. Get rainy. the cold wipes. Get the cold wipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, for us, when we were in the NICU, we were like, he's getting his butt wiped with these cold ones all the time. Why change it now? We mm -hmm. had the same thing. Henny never got warm milk. I mean, oh. he got warm milk when it was like frozen and then we had to heat it up. Yeah. Oh. Um, or if he got like freshly expressed milk, but with both his formula and um, breast milk, it was always room temp or room cold. Temp. So in the, in the hospital, they, they do. They gave him cold. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because it was that. either freshly expressed or, and when he got formula, it wasn't heated up. And wow. the NICU nurse was just like, if they you never give them heated up milk, they don't know that they want heated up milk. Yeah. So she was like, it's up to you when you get home, if you want to do this or not. Um, and Henny never, he just didn't care about it. So oh, wow. that's kind of how I felt about the, we had a warmer, but it took up so much space. And I was like, is this even a thing? Right. So we just ended up not using it. It was a gift from a friend and we donated it. Bye bye. So pass, cool. pass on a white warmer. As you've closed out this last year, I know that your favorite thing <laughs> was to freeze all of your breast milk and you would yes. offer it to everybody. Yes. So do you still have any breast milk left? We do have. What? No. We have breast milk that is for the bath. Oh. So it's stuff that like if I went out and had a glass of so wine. It's alcohol breast milk. It's alcohol breast milk. 100% alcohol <laughs> breast milk. Yes. <laughs> So I have three little pouches of alcohol mm. breast milk left for bags. Wow. But Henny's frozen breast milk that he drank, we made it to a month after his first birthday. Wow. Yeah. With giving him just one meal a day. Not one meal a day, but one serving, um, serving a day. Mm -hmm. But once he had regular milk and started eating regular food, it just wasn't. I would like the reason it lasted that even that extra month was because I would forget to give him mm, the breast milk. He wasn't as interested. It wasn't, not that he wasn't interested. It was just that I would forget. Oh, I would okay. be like, oh yeah, here's the milk in your, he transitioned from a bottle to a cup fairly quick. Yeah. So it just wasn't something I thought about anymore. Wow. Um, which is crazy because it kind of was all consuming at the time, mm -hmm. you know? And you're like, I have to, ma I have to make it to the year. I have to. You made it. And now I'm like, eh. Your breastfeeding journey is over. My breastfeeding journey is over. My titties will never recover. <laughs> R.I.P. Beg's titties. You were once, you were in your glory days, and now, now you are beautiful. Now your glory sways. Your glory sways left, right, <laughs> um, all over the place. R.I.P. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we knew them well. <laughs> and I know we get a lot of emails, actually, with breastfeeding questions. Oh, yeah. Breastfeeding journeys. Do you have any reflections at the end of mm. end of this past year on your on your breastfeeding journey? I mean, it sounds you're going to uh, people are going to hear this advice all the time, but it was like I don't know why I was so concerned with it mm. after the fact. Like once you're done with it, you're like I don't know why that was such a big deal to me. Mm. Um, but I think just feel the feelings that you're feeling about it. Mm. If you hate it, if you love it, if you're indifferent mm -hmm. towards it, like just right. all of those are valid and as yeah. long as it's what you, your doctor, and you know whoever else is with your baby agrees on, mm -hmm. do whatever you want. Don't care about what other people are saying, um, unless like <laughs> you're you know hurting someone or something. <laughs> then right. care about what people say. But it's totally up to you, mm -hmm. whatever you do or don't do. Different for everyone. It's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you do you. Don't care what people say on social media. Talk to your doctor. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> it's up to you. I mean, I will tell you the amount of things kids put in their mouth later on. <laughs> Henny's favorite toy is a shoe right now. 
Yum. He loves it. He yes. loves it. Loves shoes. Yes. yes. So we have Gotta rearranged. Build that immune system. We have rearranged where the shoes system. live in the house. So, that is so funny. unfortunately, they are no longer his favorite toy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think whatever you're feeling is valid. And when you're in it, it's really tough and it's stressful. Mm-hmm. And then when you're out of it, you kind of blacked out. During, uh, for me, I feel like I blacked out. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I don't even remember that. <laughs> like what happened? What happened? Where was I? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's all valid and just do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sitting with us today. And thank you, Becky, for sharing more on your journey as a parent this past year. Thanks, Uncle Matt. So (laughs) exciting. But until next time, everybody remember to wash your hands, pee after sex, be responsible, be nice to others, be nice to yourself. Vote. I was going to say register to vote. Vote. And until next time, bye. Bye. bye.